Hi! I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In this video, we've collaborated with some of our doll friends for a bug themed collab. But if you don't like insects, don't worry, they're all super cute bug girls. Let's get started. We had a lot of ideas for an insect lady, but for some reason we kept rejecting every new concept. We thought about a cicada, because we recently visited Provence, and it's a symbol of this region of France. A firefly, because it's a good project for using LEDs. Dragonfly, because they're cool. A ladybug, a classic monarch butterfly, a steampunk fly pilot, but nothing was really convincing. We thought about a wasp, a bee or a hornet, but our doll customizing friend Marjana from Catmillion Studio did a whole series of fairies inspired by black and yellow insects. For a long time we rejected these options because nobody likes stealing ideas from other artists, but a wasp doll was stuck in our minds and we couldn't resist. I promise she's going to be very different from Marjana's black and yellow family. By the way, check her work. As you can see, I prepared Gilda Goldstack from the Monster Highline, as she's the only yellow doll we currently have. I glued a few magnets inside her head and covered the face with plastic wrap. I'm going to sculpt two big but very simple insect eyes, but I don't want the clay to touch and scratch the skin, so I'm starting with a layer of fabric and glue. When the glue is dry, I can start sculpting. Then, all you have to do is wait until it's cured, trim the excess fabric and paint the eyes black. Let's take care of her body. She's a wasp and they have six limbs. I considered taking arms from the body that was left after making Enchan, but with Abby's forearms and hands. But then I found some spare parts from Operetta, forearm from an unidentified doll, an, an inden, a forearm from an unden, an, <laughs> a forearm from an unidentified doll, <laughs> it's just a forearm from an un, from Avia, I checked this. <laughs> and a black hand of a Maddy Hatter. I gave the doll a good portion of anesthetics and proceed with the surgery. I had to make the holes bigger than I initially thought, so that the arms can go in the same way the original shoulders are placed. We'll take care of the additional arms later. Now let's sculpt some clothes. It's not easy to do very tight clothes in this scale when you use fabric, so sculpting is a better option if you want a super slim fit and you don't change your doll's outfits. I'm using the same stuff as for the eyes, air drying clay called epoxy sculpt. I'm trying to make the transition from clay to plastic as smooth as possible, but there was a lot of sanding anyway. Then I tried changing the shape of the feet, but I didn't succeed. I should have used boiling water or a heat gun instead of fire. The flame melted only the outside coat of the plastic and I basically ruined her feet. But that's not a tragedy, as I want to cut some parts anyway, now I just have to cut a little bit more. I sculpted these very pointy toes, sanded the whole thing and started painting the clothes with black acrylic paint. Of course, there's no wasp without black stripes and I chose them to be on her legs. After a quick sketch I can make them black with acrylics. If it was nice, cheerful and innocent character, I would probably go for a more cartoony and stylized vibe with the stripes being symmetrical and similar to each other. But here we're going for a more chaotic vibe of a wasp demon. Cunning, sexy and maybe even dangerous. So I'm going for more organic shapes by adding a bit of shakiness and some random spikes. Let's add more colors to the body. To be honest, I was more inspired by a giant Asian hornet when it comes to the color palette. They have more of an orange tone that suits Gilda's skin. I'm adding a few layers of chalk pastels to her legs, shoulders and arms. It just looks better than plain yellow everywhere. Okay, so let me preface this segment with I know that there is a ladder on the wall, there's a piece of flooring missing and we're in our coats. We've been hiding something from you. We are renovating a place to serve as a workshop for some of the messy stuff that we do on this channel. It was supposed to be finished before we had to go in and do this stuff, but it's not and this is the best we could do for now. Okay, now for the start of today's video, and that is this huge box which contains the M1 laser and blade cutter combo from Xtool. The machine has been sent to us for free, but we did not get paid to say anything about it, just so you know. It's a laser. Laser. Wait, laser is an acronym? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Huh, didn't know that. 
you're still wrong though. I have 3D printers and a Cricut, so I was worried that I wouldn't get much use out of a laser cutter, but let me tell you how excited I am about having this in our workshop after I've done some work on it. It comes in this huge box because there are a lot of additional materials in there. We have mats for the blade cutting, risers for when you want to cut out stuff that is a bit taller, accessories for the rotary tool, which very exciting stuff you can do on, engraving rings, tumblers, mugs, Christmas ornaments. Then we have our materials package and the rotary attachment for the laser, or as I like to call it, Lucier. But wait, there's more. In the machine, there is a manual, or as I like to call it, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Some basic materials for testing and other attachments, including the exhaust hose, or as I like to call it, Jose. Jose. Since we are stranded in a place that is currently being renovated, this problem has arisen. Oh no, I don't have a screwdriver, but these don't require a screwdriver, so we're good. Nice! So well thought out. You literally don't need anything that is not in the box to set this machine up. Installing the blade is really easy. You press the plunger, pop the blade in, and then shake to confirm that the magnet firmly holds it in place. That is an optional step. Another magnet holds the whole thing in the housing and it really couldn't be any easier. I specifically requested to get the air assist set for our M1 and you'll later see why. It is basically an air pump that helps to blow away any debris from the wood while cutting. Excel obliged, so we will be testing the machine with some additional goodies. They also sent us the riser base with the honeycomb panel, which allows you to engrave on taller things easier. The honeycomb allows the air to flow a bit better in the machine too, and comes with these neat magnet holders which will make sure that your material stays in place while being cut. The premium materials package really showcases the abilities of this machine. It includes a neat booklet with all of the settings that you need to use for the stuff that's in the box. And the stuff in the box is really cool. There's metal business cards, wood slices, wooden tags, there's metal tags as well. And you can do coasters on this thing. Not even mentioning all of the blade cutting stuff that you get, which is vinyl, fake leather, sticker paper, you name it. It's probably able to be cut on the machine. And it obviously comes with some wood. It's a laser cutter. One vinyl. Two vinyl, three, four vinyl, ah! <laughs> After I assembled the riser, I popped in one of the plywoods that came with the machine and it was time for the first cutting. I think you can see the excitement on my face. Let's go. The machine comes with its own software, which I think is still in beta, so it's not perfect, but it was capable of doing all the tasks I needed it for. I prepared some files earlier and imported them into the Extol Creative Space. Since the M1 has a camera, you can see on your actual material where you're putting your image. Then it's just a matter of setting what should be engraved and what should be cut, and the file can be sent to the M1 through a USB cable. I press the button and watch the magic happen. We had terrible lighting in the room for renovation reasons, but you can see that it turned out great. I cut the remaining piece out of a darker wood tone and I think you guys should subscribe. The next thing I cut out was a placket that will go onto the workshop door when we finally have a door here. It's our logo for when we do resin stuff. While the machine was working, we decided to make the place feel a bit more like home. This is our couch. <laughs> it's a mess, I know. I can't wait for it to be done too. Let's see her. Now for the actual project for this video. From a very very thin 1mm plywood, I am cutting out the wings for our wasp girl. This is something that I don't think a 3D printer would be capable of doing so precisely and fast. The outline is about 1.5mm thin, so we can get that filigree vibe of insect wings. I cut 4 pieces out of each big and small wing, and they turned out great. While I had the M1 in laser mode, or the sear mode, we decided to make a custom stand for our doll with this wood slice and put our logo on it. I messed up preparing the file for this, so it's not perfect, but you can definitely tell it's our logo. We then switched to the blade cutting mode to complete our wing sandwich by making a middle layer out of this orange vinyl. This went really fast and you just need to put the double-sided sticky mat into the machine to be able to cut with the blade. That's all I've been able to do with the limited time we had in our soon-to-be workshop. 
but I soon plan to show you another project that I have been cooking up on the Lassier. I think this machine will come in handy for future projects of ours, but I will definitely need a bit more time to perfect some of my settings. Excel have been kind enough to tolerate our janky review setup, so please check out their machines through our links below. They have a Black Friday sale going on right now, and they are always working on making new machines as well, like the Super Cool and Greyburn. Thanks to Extol for making my robot army grow, and we shall get to assembling the wings. We debated whether we should leave the wings bare wood, but I think they will match the doll better if they were black, so I had Alex paint them. But we actually chose a yellow-orange gradient to match the doll rather than contrast her. To assemble these, we're going to need some tiny screws, a screwdriver, small hinges, our cutout pieces, and some super glue. I'm placing most of the glue on the part without the cutouts and some tiny dots of glue on the thin lines to try to make it not seep out and mess up the vinyl, which it did a bit anyway. I put the vinyl on and pressed it down for the glue to work. I then layered the other mirroring piece on top, making sure they're placed right. When I had all my pieces glued together, I could start assembling the wings with the hinges. I widened the hole with a thumb tack and put a small screw through the wing piece and the hinge. It was very tiny, so I had to do this. Super zoom! On the other side, I added a tiny nut. The upper wing gets added almost the same, but it gets a spacer in between the wing and the hinge so that it can overlap the bottom wing. I tightened my nuts as much as I could and then try to super glue them shut so that the wings don't fall over time. But that didn't work, unsurprisingly. Before I continued assembling the other wing, I realized that one set of the holes on the hinge has to be wider, so I decided to widen it now. It wasn't easy and I didn't have the proper drill bit for metal, but I managed. To somewhat secure the nuts for less floppiness, I decided to put some nail gel on the back and cure it. It will work for some time and that is all I need. Now the wings are ready to be put on the doll. After giving the head two coats of Mr. Super Clear sealant, I can start sketching the new face. I'm going for a neutral expression with a tiny smirk. I'm going to paint a lot of face tattoos, but I want them to look good with the additional insect eyes too. So I'm checking from time to time how it looks with them on. After I have the first sketch in brown, I can switch to black watercolor pencil. For the colors of the eyes I chose light blue so they pop. I really like restricted color palettes. I think they are more eye-pleasing than a lot of colors in one place, but black, yellow and orange are pretty boring together. So I just had to add one more color to the design. I'm adding more and more shapes and volume to the black marks and also details like eyelashes or corners of the mouth. One of the cheeks had a scratch that wasn't visible before and it showed after I tried to blush the surface. I'm not going to erase what I already have at the moment because I like it, so let's add one more black stripe there to cover it. <laughs> this is the strategy that henna painting taught me. When you have an ugly stain that won't come off, cover it with something else. When I have all the stripes planned out, I can move to black paint. I have this super matte black vinyl paint from Maya Mary and it looks so smooth when it's dry. You can add another layer of paint and once you have a good opacity, brush strokes won't be visible at all. Then I'm adding more colors, white on the eyes and orange and red around the stripes. I want the tattoos to have a glowing halo around them, or maybe a burnt halo? I don't know, like the effect on the cover of Dune's soundtrack. Now my favorite part, adding lighter details like highlights, waterline, white lashes and white hair on the brows. This is an Enchantarium doll, and we give our dolls freckles. I didn't like the lash in the middle, so I painted over it with white paint, making a lighter decoration on her forehead, eyelids and cheeks. I rarely leave those details pure white, and this time I'm toning it down with a light orange pencil. A few more highlights on the irises, pupils, on her cupid's bow, lower lip, corners of the mouth and a few more white freckles. The last step is to add a layer of shiny pearlex powder and seal it with Mr. Super Clear one final time. 
I had a lot of ideas for the hair, but I was worried that long hair will mess up the sleek, elegant silhouette, so I went with a really short hairstyle. This way the horns are exposed, the neck looks slim, the wings are going to be visible and the additional arms won't be lost in a sea of details. I'm gluing super tiny yarn pieces to the head. After it dries, I can remove the excess and add a second layer. The first layer is usually too patchy to be left alone, and the second layer fixes the problem. I couldn't resist extending the tattoos to the hair, and luckily it's super easy on flocking, as you can paint it with pastels. I used this technique before on Meowth, and it looked very good, so I decided to try it here too. I liked how the horns looked all brown, but something was telling me we were going to use a lot of gold accessories later, so I painted the tips of the horns gold. Welcome to Cooking with Barbish. In this episode, we're making black goop. Just kidding, we're going to try to dye the extra set of our waspy wasp. I added the ingredients to hot water as per the instructions, gloved up, and decided to test it on a hand. The first time I took it out, it wasn't black enough, so I dipped it the second time and it disappeared. I guess my chopstick skills need some work. After some blind fishing in this very smelly and not see-through liquid, I managed to find the hand somehow. It looked pretty good, so I decided to dump the rest of the pieces in, but this time in a stocking so I don't lose any of them. Then I did my little dance while I was waiting for the dye to dye the plastic. The instructions said 30 minutes for fabric, but I didn't keep the doll in that long. Along with the arms, I plopped in a Create a Monster Girl to dye for a future project, because I felt like it would be a waste of dye to make it only for a few pieces I had. So this girl will wait for when we have an idea for what to do with her. And the joints aren't perfect, but it turned out pretty good if you ask me. The overspill from the dye came off the metal pretty well, if you're curious. To complete the laser engraved stand base, I need some stand pieces, which I conveniently had on hand. In the original, the rod is just in a hole, so we have to figure out how big of a hole to drill, and how deep the slice is, and mark that on our appropriately set. <laughs> In the original, the rod is just a hole, so we have to figure out how big the hole needs to be. And then we have to figure out how deep the slice is and mark on our drill bit the depth we want to drill. And we will definitely succeed in this task, right? Lola's gone. Wrong! Lola's right here, you- I drilled all the way through. But it's not something a bit of hot glue can't fix. I added a coat of black matte vinyl paint to the hands to match with the rest of the outfit and started decorating them. Since I chose the color of the eyes, I knew I had to use blue somewhere else in the design too. I just like when colors or patterns are repeated. I painted the stripes with white first, but don't worry, the next layer will be blue. When the white was drying, I took care of the shoes. I absolutely love how Lily's boots turned out and I want to make a similar effect here, so I covered the whole shoes with a layer of UV dry top coat and cured it in a UV lamp. But I simply couldn't stop there. The effect was so mesmerizing that I had to add it to the sleeves, to the bodice and eventually on the additional arms too. And don't forget to gloss the insect eyes. With the eyes on, she looks like Trinity from The Matrix. Before the final assembly of the wings and accessories, I want to decorate the stand. The doll is not very connected to nature, but she's still an insect, so she probably likes plants and flowers. I'm mixing tiny rocks with glue and applying them to the wooden base. Then I'm adding paint and moss and dried flowers. To make it lighter and more fitting with the doll, I'm dry brushing all the parts with gold paint, especially the stones and also the engraved logo. And this is how it looks. The final assembly requires some more drilling. Since the doll's back is very curvy, I'm taking these offcuts from the laser and sacking them together with some super glue. I then make a hole in them, the same width of the hole in the hinge. I glue this to the lower hole of the hinge and we're ready to drill corresponding hinge holes on the doll's back. The head could be put on now and the arms get a metal hook put in them through which some elastic is strung to make the extra arms poseable. The wings can get screwed in and... Oh no, she flew away! 
<laughs> we decided to add some jewelry to the wings and the wasp in general. And she's done. This is how she turned out. I felt like I was gonna do nothing for this video since we decided to go no sew. But it turns out that you don't need to sew to make an interesting character. I love experimenting with new techniques and laser cutting was on my to-do list for some time now. Since this is a Bug Girls collaboration, there are five more other insect themes videos that are pretty fly. Don't be shy and check them out. <laughs> oh my god, that's so fly. <laughs> Below you'll find the links to videos by Jackie O, Josephine's Creatures, I Could Do That DIY, Creepy Kitty Customs and Lady Dynamite Creates. Oh, and we decided to name her Rosa, because Osa is wasp in Polish, and she reminded us of Rosa from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. Are you fucking single? <laughs> no. I respect that. <laughs> what is your favorite bug? Or if you hate bugs like me, what is your least favorite bug? I hate them all, but I hate the flying ones the most. Because they fly up in your face like they own the place. Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. As you can see, I prepared Golda Gildstack from... <laughs> Golda? Golda Gildstack? Tak powiedziałam? Gilda Goldstack.